Welcome back, Shipmate Squad. Today we're going to be talking about how you can build a pallet with different size boxes. Not every time that you go to build a pallet are you going to have the same size boxes. So we want to make sure you have the tools to build a pallet regardless of what boxes you are using. Today I'm joined by Melvin, our warehouse manager, who's going to help us along the way. Let's get started. So guys, the most important thing when you go to start building a pallet is safety. So you want to take a moment to inspect the pallet. You want to make sure that there's no sharp edges, no splintered wood, anything that can hurt you or the person receiving the pallet. This is the most important thing, so we're going to do that now. So once you took a second and you looked at your pallet, you can begin to build the pallet. So the first thing you want to keep in mind when building a mixed pallet is that you want to start with larger, heavier boxes. In this case, we have both of those. We have larger boxes and we have heavier boxes. Usually you would want to start with the large box because the foundation of your pallet is very important. Having a strong foundation to build additional layers on is key to the overall structural integrity of your pallet as well as keeping it straight and not leaning. So, usually you'd want to use a large box like this to give you a strong base. This time around, we happen to have some very heavy electrical cords. Electrical cords have a lot of weight and they're going to crush a lighter box such as these footstools. So, we're going to make sure that we put these electrical cords on the bottom so their weight doesn't end up crushing the boxes and causing our pallet to lean. Let's build the first layer. <laughs> So guys, as you see, we built the first layer of our pallet. It's a really strong foundation of heavy boxes of like sizes. Nothing is you know, too much taller than the other box or too much of a different shape. So it gives us a nice strong foundation to continue building future layers on. So as you see, we spaced it out to make sure it takes up the whole pallet. Even though there's a small gap, this isn't going to really affect things going forward. But we want to minimize the number of gaps we have if possible. So, you know, you want to make sure that you have like size boxes on the bottom, heavier, larger boxes preferred, and that's what's going to give you the strong foundation. We're going to move on now and we're going to build a second layer of boxes, keeping in mind that this is a lower level of the pallet. So we want to keep our weight low to the ground so it's not likely to tip because if you've ever built a tower of blocks, you know if you put a bunch of weight up high, things tend to lean or tilt when force acts upon them. So we're going to want to try to keep a low center of gravity here and make sure that our pallet is strong and well organized. As you can see with our second layer, we decided to go with those larger boxes I pointed out at the beginning of this video. These boxes have some weight to them, they're not the heaviest, but now that we got that heavy layer on the bottom, we don't have to worry about them being crushed anymore. And these can provide that solid foundation I was talking about. Now as we move on to our third layer, this is where things are going to get interesting. We are out of boxes that are of the same size to complete a full layer. So this layer is going to be comprised of boxes of different sizes and we're going to talk about after we stacked them how we did it and why we chose those boxes. Let's get started on the third layer. <laughs> So guys, as we see, the third layer here was a little more difficult to put together. There was a lot of decision making that went into this. As you see, Melvin here tried to group like boxes together to try to maintain that shape. And he had to, by the end, use some different size boxes. So we now have almost two levels going on to this pallet. So there's a lot of things to keep in mind here, uh, but I think the big takeaways here are to 
you know, try to keep like boxes side by side to give you that nice, easy level. And two, to make sure that everything you have stays true to the shape of the palette that you are currently building. So we will begin to build the fourth layer of this pack. As you guys seen, we completed the palette here with this layer. I had him throw the last couple boxes on top. What we really tried to do here is keep the shape of the palette. We really tried to keep that solid rectangular shape going without any boxes really sticking too far out or too far in. And we tried to keep that shape consistent despite the challenge of using different size boxes. Something you'll notice is that this thing became almost like a multi-level Tetris game. So we're using boxes that are sticking up some, down some, but we're really trying to make, maintain that shape. The idea here is that that shape is really important. That's what gives structure to a palette like this. When we went to put those last couple boxes on at the end, it's really important to note that we put them in the center of the palette. These boxes are less likely to fall off the palette in transit if they are in the center rather than on the outside. So that just gives you a little more leeway as this palette is being transported. So something we want to show you real quick in this video is how to use tape on a palette. So this palette's pretty good. It's got a lot of shape to it, but sometimes they're not all going to be this pretty. So if you have a palette that, you know, has a little bit of a lean to it or that, you know, the shape didn't come out just quite right, you can add a little bit of tape to a palette to help give it a little more structure and a little more strength. And that'll really help until you get to the wrapping station to make sure that this palette transits Correctly. All right, first, you unleash the tape. Let's take it to one box. You stretch it out, turn it backwards so the, so the sticky part of the tape doesn't tape to any other box. And you just run around. So what he just did was he ran a tape line around the outside to give a little more strength to these boxes and make sure they don't shift as we move them to a pallet wrapper. So this is going to keep these boxes intact, none are going to fall off the side, and we're going to be good. You can do this as many times as you need to in as many places as you need to on this pallet. A little extra tape isn't going to hurt, just try not to be excessive with it. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you'll give us a like and a subscribe and come back and watch some more videos next week. We're going to be posting a video every single week and we hope you'll join us for the Shipmate journey.